Dave Eisring is very noisy, and it's a sellout as Steve Robinson, the local hero, defends his world featherweight title against Duke McKenzie. The Londoner chasing a record fourth world crown. Hello, good evening to all. Every so often in this sport, you get a fight that really gets the pulses racing. A contest that if you've got any interest at all in boxing, you just have to see. And Steve Robinson against Duke McKenzie falls right into that category. Robinson's a red-hot favourite, particularly here in Cardiff, of course. But McKenzie's going for a bit of history. He's trying to become the first British fighter to win four world titles at different weights. Barry McGuigan is with us. Barry, former world featherweight champion, of course. And this one has a really special ring to it. It certainly has. Uh, McKenzie brings with him to the table vast experience, three world titles, fabulous tactician, whereas Robinson is his usual vigour and determination, huge desire and vastly improved fighter, tremendous aggressive fighter. It's going to be a fascinating fight, could be a classic. I'm sure it will be, and of course Barry will be keeping his own scorecard throughout the contest. But you really do have to hand it to Steve Robinson. He's cleaned up one of the toughest divisions in, in British boxing, that featherweight division. But Duke McKenzie, he comes here knowing it's his last chance really to hit the boxing jackpot. And McKenzie is quite convinced that he has the credentials to succeed. Steve Robinson has beaten some real good fighters, Paul Hodkinson, Colin McMillan, John Davidson. But he hasn't fought nobody like me yet because like, I'm a three-time world champion. And that really speaks for itself, you know? I've had nine world title fights, I've got a wealth of experience and uh, I'm not shot, I'm not over the hill. If I am, I'd appreciate you saying so because, you know, at least after the fight there's no excuse, you know, you can't say, oh, you beat like a washed up fighter. I've got a lot of life left in me yet and, uh, you know, minutes away. Mackenzie's fighting for his family's future. He's torn himself away from home to get in the mood. Holly's nine months old, Jessica's four. Their names will be on his trunks tonight. And his daughters are everything, you know, to us. So I just, um, like I say, there'll be times in the fight where I know I'm going to get hit and I know I'm going to get hurt and I've got to dig real deep. But like I say, I just think of, um, you know, my dependence and that's what drives me on. That's what will keep me going. <laughs> Steve Robinson thinks he can just walk through me and bully me like he's done to the rest of his fighters, he's in for a rude awakening. Because, like I say, I'm not a big puncher, but I will get his attention, and then he'll know he's in a real fight. The dedicated Steve Robinson has frozen out every challenger here at Cardiff High Street. The truth is, since he came from obscurity to become world champion, no one's even come close to beating him. The winner! the new WBO featherweight champion of the world is Robinson, ladies and gentlemen. Robinson gets the He's Superman at the moment, and he can just walk through everybody. And I've looked at him and I've studied him, and if I didn't think I could win, I could go out on my laurels at the minute. He's like a former three-time world champion and, you know, go out on a little bit of a crest of a wave, but I'm still hungry for that championship and, you know, the finance that goes with it. He's hungry, he's confident, and he's totally focused. But don't forget, Duke McKenzie is not only fighting Steve Robinson down here in Cardiff, he's fighting 4,000 
very noisy supporters indeed. Robinson, as always, though, very, very composed in the dressing room. Super temperament. He feels his strength is going to be decisive tonight. And Robinson and Duke McKenzie will be in the ring when you rejoin us. And welcome back to Cardiff Ice Ring. It's noisy, it's very, very hot. Mackenzie and Robinson are raring to go. Let's join your MC, Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please remain standing for the Welsh National Anthem. Thank you. contest by the WBO, the Chief Steward from the British Boxing Board, Lord Brooks of Trimorfa, the timekeeper at the bell, Mr Ivor Campbell of Swansea, the judges at ringside, Dave Paris of London, Jose Rivera of Puerto Rico and Robert Watson of Michigan, the United States. The referee in charge of the scene's action, officiating in his 20th world title contest, Mr. Roy Francis of London and the matchmaker, Mr. Ernie Fossey of London. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, Saturday night is Big Fight Night live on ITV. Frank Warren and Sports Network in association with our sponsors, Empress Cars, proudly present a contest of 12 three-minute rounds to decide the WBO featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing the boxers in the blue corner, wearing the green trunks, fighting from Croydon, South London. His professional record of 40 contests reads 36 wins, 19 wins by way of KO, and four losses. At yesterday's weigh-in, he scaled eight stone, 13 and three quarter pound. He is the current featherweight champion of Great Britain, a former three times champion of the world. The challenger for the title, the little man, Duke McKenzie. And in the red corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim, fighting from his native city of Cardiff, a professional record for 28 contests, 18 wins, nine by way of KO, nine losses and one draw. He comes to the ring weighing eight stone, 13 and a half pound, making his fifth defense of the title this evening, the WBO featherweight champion of the world, Steve Robinson.
Ladies and gentlemen, the WBO Featherweight Championship of the World. It's a very big night here in Cardiff, and we have the best commentary team standing by, the former world champion Jim Watt, and first of all, let's say a very good evening to Reggie. Reg Guttridge. Well, you're quite right, Jim. I mean, you could cut the atmosphere with a knife here. This is a legitimate, good, classic fight, really, because both are skilled, both are strong, and both a couple of good guys, family men, and, you know, there haven't been no vitriol before the fight, none of that old nonsense that we've been putting up with. And in a way, you're going to feel sorry for the loser here. Certainly, Robinson has really got the Welsh crowd now. He's won them over with the... He's been the underdog, actually, in a few fights, and he's come to the front. He's a kind of boxing Cinderella man. And then you've got the potential record-breaker in this man, Duke McKenzie. So, Nick Lane, the little man, hoping to become the big man. And Steve Robinson, well, determined now to hang on to that championship that he won as a 48-hour substitute came in, defeated John Davison, and this is the sort of the old-fashioned rags to riches or near poverty to plenty for him. And referee Roy Francis, former amateur international as well. And here we go, scheduled, of course, four 12 rounds. The nine-stone division. I want to talk about Robinson's natural strength. On the other hand, he's also a good boxer. Not a rough and tumble fighter, really. Just tends to wear opposition down, as he has proved. Suffered his share of losses too early on in his uh, career, Robinson. Some of those have, I, I think, I said before when he's fighting have, have been very dubious decisions. But he's done it the hard way. Paid all the dues. Little Mackenzie, well, we've watched him right from the, the flyweight days and before that as an amateur. Always a good, correct boxer. Good, sharp brain. But we're wondering now, moving up from fly, that's eight stone to feather nine stone, whether he carries the power with it. And at 31, whether he still has that fighting edge. He says he has, and who are we to disbelieve? He's had two good wins in non-title fights, getting ready for this one. And remember the reigning British champion. Well, Mackenzie really has to look to get himself in front at, at the halfway stage here. He can't possibly be behind in points then and when the strength comes into the fight. But the problem he's going to find with Robinson, everything Robinson does is from a real solid base. So he doesn't do anything silly, anything erratic. He's very controlled and that chin is always nice and low and the hands nice and high. Strong, square-shouldered fighter, or boxer, really, Steve Robinson, as though he's still got the coat hanger on his shoulders there, the way it's built. They're going to play chess match for a round or two, Jim, I suspect, trying to see what the other man's got now. They both studied each other, of course, on videos. And uh, Mackenzie, in particular, is very good at analysing his opposition. I think Mackenzie would have liked a slightly better start than his reg. He's been pinned a couple of times with counters. And uh, he's finding Robinson a bit more difficult to hit from than he imagined. That's a low punch from uh, Mackenzie. Time out. go against him a bit obviously from the judges point of view if we do happen to go to 12 inside Mackenzie already is beginning to grab hold he doesn't want to do anything inside obviously feels Robinson the stronger I think they're both glad to get that round over Jim actually there was so much tension and the crowd loving it after only one round. They're great fight supporters, you know, they really are. And, th and this fellow's won their hearts over, Robinson, no doubt about it. And there's the corner man there, only Russian ex-boxer or something. And also D Di Gardner, who's handled uh, champions before. We had a real novelty, actually, at the weigh-in ceremony, and uh, 
for what it's worth, McKenzie was a quarter of a pound heavier. Uh, that was last night, actually, and it was in an industrial area in Gwent, in the Gwent Valley, uh, when the sponsors, the Empress Cars, they, they had an amphitheater staged and dressing room specially built. Looks like a little Las Vegas, very original. And the Welsh Guard trumpeters sounded the fanfare. It's a low punch coming in. Bingo, yeah, yes. Well, it was well low, oh, yes. no complaints for that, yeah. Yeah, that, that could interfere with the wedding tackle. Round two. And a good enough start, isn't it, for a championship fight, this one. As I said, they're both cagey boxers, they're both beautifully fit. Mackenzie just has a little tendency to grab hold as soon as they're up close, Reg. Yeah, there's no way he knows he can't uh, open up when he's up close to Robinson. He wants to do everything at long range. And again, he's pinned the long right hand of Robinson. Yeah, there it is there, look, clutching, as you said, Jim. The reason for that is he wants to smother him in close, and he doesn't want to allow Robinson to work inside. Yeah, but in the first round, I don't think he was as effective as he would have liked to have been at long range. He's finding it difficult to get through that tight defence of Robinson. And when they're up close, he's really doing nothing. very difficult to step up weights as he, he has done, although he's proved it by being a world champion at three separate weights. But the further up you step, Reg, obviously the more difficult it is, and I wonder what, the, I mean, Steve Robinson, nine stone at the weigh-in, but that's not his natural weight, his natural weight's far heavier than that, and he'll have gone back up. The weigh-in being last night, obviously suits like the champion as well. He'll have put all those added pounds back on again. See, again, Mackenzie grabbing as soon as they're up close. Comes with a wealth of experience, 40 fights, remember, the Duke. It looks untidy, but Mackenzie's hoping that's going to be effective enough to prevent him being bustled inside, which Robinson's very good at. Mackenzie letting some punches go now, but just a little bit erratic, a little bit wild. A minute to go in this round, and Robinson was more accurate there, Jim, wasn't he? Yep, I think uh, Mackenzie already is finding some problems. His boxing not as smooth as he would have liked. He can't trade up close, and his jab's not really winning anything yet. There's a lot riding on this for both boxers, and particularly Mackenzie, who Jim Rhodes will quite rightly said is probably his last fling. But as he says, he's, he's saying he's getting £40,000 for this challenge, which is more than he earns sometimes for a, a title defence. And he's looking for a bit of glory. All, all the fighters like that, you know, they, they like their bit of glory, a bit of respect. As we come up to the end of the second, I tell you what, they, they keep saying they don't claim to be the hardest hitters in the game, but these fellas are hitting correctly, they can hurt. Yeah, but if the timing's good and the, the punch is delivered properly, yep, the, the, the power will come. But I just feel that Mackenzie would have liked to have made a bigger impression on the champion in the first couple of rounds. You have to look for him to make his successes early. Like again, Robinson, so controlled, just marching forward, nice and tight. And that lead right hand is catching Mackenzie. What a difference it makes, Jim, winning a world championship. The man who virtually came from nowhere, Robinson. See, I don't think Robinson really has learned any new tricks. He had, he'd learned the business before he won the title, but he's just doing what he always did with so much more confidence, so much more experience, so much more belief in himself. And it's really working a treat for him. But he's so controlled, no mistakes.
Oh, that was a bit of a low punch, but he ignored that, McKenzie. Rousing chances, I'm sure you can hear Steve O. Apart from these sort of close up kind of scuffles, Jim, there's some good boxing going on. Yeah, the, the rounds are fairly close, but uh, you always get the feeling that Robinson's strength is the most noticeable thing so far. Mackenzie just he's too happy to cling on inside doesn't want to trade. I think he's realised already who the stronger is. Referee Francis then keeps giving a little nag there to McKenzie to, to break what he's told there and step back. Controls the fight well, Roy Francis, very experienced. And of course done it himself. So it's a long way from flyweight up to featherweight, especially a big, strong featherweight. And I think Mackenzie's finding that a problem already. Yeah, they, they weigh in virtually the same, Jim. You know, just a quarter of a pound difference, but as you say, one is what's a genuine featherweight, who could well have put on two or three pounds since the weigh-in. Oh, what a shot there. A left, a left hook by Mackenzie and countered. out of the corner there for the fourth round shoved out I think by uh, his, his cornerman Colin Smith and Carly Carew probably saying come on you've got to take the fight to him let's have a look at uh, Barry's unofficial scorecard there yeah, I, I think I'd go along with that, just about right. Four-point scoring, WBO, remember. Half-point in British boxing. Robinson doesn't get phased at all, Jim, does he? He's, he's so settled in everything he does. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everything is for him a good, solid, tight base. Doesn't do anything silly, just marches forward. He's patient, he's determined, and he's good. He uses his assets to the full. The action's just a little bit scrappy at the moment. I think uh, Mackenzie trying to just be a little bit cagey. He doesn't want to get involved too much. He's nagged at him a bit there, Francis. Well, he's tending to, to cling on a little bit at times. A couple of his punches are straight low. But the big problem for Mackenzie is that he hasn't really made an impression. This is better now. He has to put some snap into the punches. Mackenzie's spoiling a little bit here. Up close, he's pushing his head forward. He's not butting, but he's putting his head down and pushing Robinson back. Just spoiling. See there again, holding and grabbing inside. Mackenzie just spoiling a little bit. He's going to have to produce some more clean boxing here. Oh, it's, it's developing now to, you know, a, a battle of stamina and aggression it's going to be. The old judges really have been instructed up now recently to points more for aggression. The old milling on the retreat is more or less going out of good scoring in boxing. I, I might tend to disagree with that a bit, but that's the way it is. Nice little body shot there from Robinson. Just uh, stop McKenzie in his tracks. So just becoming a little bit untidy, and it's mainly that's, that's mainly McKenzie's fault. Well, here's uh, Gary Newbon trying to get a word in with Barry McGuigan at ringside. Who do you give that one to? Funny enough, I give that one to Mackenzie. It's a 
I thought there would be a power struggle in the first half dozen rounds. But Mackenzie's fighting very well. He's grabbing when he gets up close. He's boxing well from the outside. But Robinson looks so strong. I mean, as well, Jim said, a big move up from flyweight up to featherweight. Well, that's the obvious point. Mackenzie's punching as hard as Robinson at this stage. But every time Robinson lands a solid shot, you can see Mackenzie dip and sh shudder right to his boots. So I think Robinson's power is going to eventually take over here. Mackenzie is holding on a lot. Do you see that as the wrong tactics or the right tactics? Well, he, funny enough, I was he was doing that in the first two rounds. In the, in the last round, he was prepared to mix up body punches. But he's grabbing. That's what he's got to do. And, Mc, and he's got to stay on the outside to throw one or two, three punches and keep on his bike. Fifth round. I think the contest, Jim, is going more or less the way we thought it would at the start like this, isn't it? Sh sharp boxing, a little bit of sort of crafty smothering by Mackenzie, and work rate and strength from the champion, Robinson. Yeah, we've got two real cagey pros in there, especially Mackenzie, but I really feel Mackenzie would have liked a better start than this. I think he maybe felt he would be landing the jab and getting back out of trouble without taking anything in reply for the first couple of rounds. But he's finding it difficult to get through Robinson's defences. This is better now. He's a bit more mobile on his feet, Mackenzie. This is what I expected in the first couple of rounds. Process, you know, the, the old time boxers were into that all the time, and crowds accepted it more those days. A sort of hit and hold tend to go out of the game a bit for the more modern crash bash, but this is far from that. It's good to see two genuine ones in there. You to go back to the days of Howard Winston and Terry Spinks when they fought at this weight. Lots of shouts from the Mackenzie family here. Dudley and Clinton, the former champion, they're really trying to, a small contingent there, trying to keep up with the Welsh. Mackenzie's the only one that rests warning, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, he's the one who's holding up, up close. Uh, I think Robinson wants the punch, but he's got his jab, he's finding the range a little bit better with the jab. But he needs to find himself more. Good left hook from Mackenzie. So he's got to use his feet a bit more. He doesn't want to stand and trade with this guy. You know, it's a long time to go in this fight. He's, he's fighting southpaw, Jim, there. It's far too early for Mackenzie to stand and trade, I would say. He's got a good variety of punches, Mackenzie. When he's at his best, he's a delight to watch. The only thing, and with the holding he's doing inside, he might take some of the steam out of Robinson. Just nullifying his what looks a little bit untidy at times. WBO version of the World Featherweight Championship, Nine Stone. Over the years, it's been a great division, actually, of world champions, actually. Owen Moran from Birmingham, Jim, the peerless Jim Driscoll. Matter of fact, my old grandfather happened the second, both of those. Howard Winston, Barry McGuigan, Paul Hodkinson. Mackenzie trying to use the ring a little bit more. This is what you have to do. I know Robinson doesn't make many mistakes, but you have to try and force him, draw some leads, make him miss, and then come back with counters. But Mackenzie has been trading too much for Maliki against a stronger man. Yeah. 
maybe the, maybe the Duke would dispute uh, Jim that we think he's not as strong. Certainly some of the opposition he met as Bantam and Super Bantam were class opposition. Yeah, but you have to remember that he's got up now at the featherweights, and it's a big featherweight he's facing tonight, a man who's trained down to featherweight. He's only had four fights as a featherweight, actually. Nice first of punches, he took one, a good one back from Robinson, but handled it well. But Mackenzie's always first to put the arms around Robinson and uh, clinch. Good stuff though, Jim, isn't it? Robinson looking to sink some body shots in whenever he gets the chance. Mackenzie's beginning to throw punches in twos and threes, which is better. Single punches are no good. Robinson was coming right through those, but he's beginning to put two and three together. That's, that's better. Yeah, those, those little salvos are good, but as the crowd rise to that now, they know Robinson fighting back. Now that's what he wants, drawing Mackenzie into a scrap. Mackenzie's not able to land his punches and get back out of trouble quick enough. He doesn't want to stand there trading. Do you think he might warrant taking a point away at some time, Jim? Well, he's had a couple of warnings, but I mean, it hasn't been blatant. Uh... See, there again, Robinson. The last modern exchange, his strength now. He's trying to raise the pace now. Yeah, that's a little scare. A mutual respect plus contempt, I suspect, there. And they're coming out for the second half of the fight now. And this fella just looks like he might be getting to a slightly higher gear. And the gentleman outside there is getting splashed with the water bottles. He's actually uh, the Welsh Boxing Board inspector. Make sure that. Nobody tucks a horseshoe in by mistake or uses coagulates that they mustn't use. Have a look at it, Jim. It's all Robinson, I think, here. Yeah, well, see, he hit the last word again. Mackenzie lets some nice punches, nice bursts of punches go early on in the round, but when it really comes down to the nitty gritty, he again is first to back off. And the longer we go here, the more Robinson's strength, you would imagine, is going to take over. That's how it's looking at the moment. Coming out for the seventh, and uh, referee Francis just walked over there to Mackenzie's corner. And here's the scorecard again. He's only got him around in front, Robinson, uh, Jim. Uh, Barry, have you got it? Yeah, maybe just a little bit further than that. But I think the main thing is all the rounds have been fairly closely contested, but the main thing is, is that the whole feel you get looking at the fight. Robinson looks the far stronger, his work is the more authority. But when Mackenzie stands off and lets punches go at threes and fours, then he has a chance, maybe, of getting himself in front. But he's getting involved too often. We haven't really seen uh, Robinson maintain a real drive for any length of time. He still seems to be concentrating and pacing himself. Well. Jim, he did it in previous fights. He, he caught up with Paul Hoskins, who at one time was reckoned the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the country. He caught up with him in the last round. He's got some patience. Remember that the Kensington's McKenzie has had nine world championship fights, fought eight world champions. Now, can he use that experience, or maybe those battles could have caught up with him, but who knows? This is what the second half's all about. Well, there's a bit of daylight between the two since the beginning of this round, and that is what Mackenzie needs. He needs room to work. He doesn't want to be too close to Robinson. He wants a little bit of room to work to get his long punches off.
Robinson not not too effective this round. For the champion here, he hasn't really put the fans under a lot of pressure. A little bit of spite again, a little wrestling match there. He's coping with it well, the referee, Jim. This is where you can test the referee. Easy fights, they, they, they always look good in easy fights, don't they? But this, he wants to make sure this one doesn't get out of hand. Well, I think Robinson must feel he's going to have to salvage something in this round. It hasn't been effective at all. He's time to move up a gear. He's given Mackenzie too much room in this round. Oh, look at that, the, the piston-like punches from both of them there. There are short shots, look at that. Oh, and the crowd on their feet there, they love that round, and it was a good round. And here's Gary with Duke Mackenzie's brother, former champion, Clint Mackenzie. Clint, it's a tremendous performance by your brother, but has he got it right? Shouldn't he be standing off a bit more? No, he's boxing great. If anything, uh, he's, he's trying to stand and fight a bit too much. But it's a perfect fight, you know, a boxer versus a fighter, classic. Robinson's very, very strong. Is your brother going to be able to maintain this pace? Well, I hope he can. Um, well, I'm shouting him to try and walk it out a bit more instead of um, bouncing around so much. What do you mean by that? What I mean is uh, instead of bouncing around, use the ring, walk instead of bouncing, yeah? Um, Duke knows how to do it. He's done it many a times. He's got to remember that Robinson's putting the pressure on and he's got to slow him down a little bit. So the more boxing and walking he can do, the better it is for him. It's a good fight. Oh, it's a classic, it really is. Into the eighth, then. Certainly the Mackenzie family out of Croydon, good amateur boxers they've all been as well. Really getting sore throats, I suspect, and I don't know whether their voices will last 12 rounds. But but Clinton put his, uh, his finger on the button all right there, didn't he? He's quite right. I thought Mackenzie improved a little bit in the seventh. He was finding more room. Robinson was pawing and, and reaching a little bit with his punches. He wasn't stepping right and up, up with the punches. They were calling out the corner there, steal it, Duke, meaning to just pick your punches, a bit like a pickpocket, you know. That's what you want to do, Reggie, and that's what he's doing in this round as well. Robinson's given him far too much room here, he's allowing him to stand off, pick his shots, and that is what Mackenzie is very, very good at. I mean, the, the last round makes me wonder just how strong Robinson still is at featherweight, because he certainly dropped down a gear, he did very little in the seven. Well, their camp always claims he doesn't have any problem. He's a, he's a very diligent trainer, but, uh, well, he, he is quite a well-built for the way, I must say. Oh, he's picking his punches well. He's, he's, he is boxing the waters a bit, Mackenzie. They caught the heads there a bit accidentally, and he, walked, he just sort of told both of them, they don't need it, it's such a good contest. It wasn't a deliberate battle, they just ran into each other. Luckily, neither of them were cut. Well, Mackenzie still clinches up close, but he's been more effective at long range this round than the last. Robinson, I think, really is going to have to raise the pace and put him under the same pressure he was under earlier. Well, he said before the fight, Mackenzie, he's got to dig deep in the trenches in this one, and that's what he's having to do. Develop again a real good little battle now. But it's got these little touches of being a bit untidy there because it, it would have been a classic but for that. But that's the tactics. I, I can't say I blame either of them for stealing a, a little bit of a breather. They're not getting many. So you don't mind so much if Mackenzie grabs Time up off. close. It's a point, maybe, Edge. One point warning. I, I feared early on that that might happen, you know, Jim. And, uh, He's been fairly lenient, Roy Francis. Yeah, well, he's been, he's been warned often enough, Reg. It's a pity because he was just probably enjoying his, his best spell of the fight so far. This is what he has to do, let some shots go. If they get back out of trouble, see, up close, he always has to grab Robinson, he doesn't have the strength to match him. 
very hard now for Mackenzie to try and steal even a, a drawn round once they've taken the, the point away, and he hasn't done. Well, the holding tactics didn't uh, didn't come up there for Mackenzie, and uh, you can't argue with the referee. That's that's the rules, and he was fairly tolerant, and there's lots of little warnings that you may not have spotted. Here's the incident now, Jim. Well, he has to survive up close, but uh, I mean, you don't want to do this. You're know, re really untied, just grab and hold, hang and look. Look at this. I mean, it's more like a wrestling match here than a boxing match. Yeah, the referee wanted to tidy it up anyway, that's quite right. I've, I've seen a lot worse, by the way, Jim, guys getting away with it, haven't you? There's just so many warnings, Reg. He's really been doing it from the first bout, yeah. tying the champion up up close. Round nine. It's certainly been fluctuating, though, the whole way through this, isn't it? Yes, yeah, two real good pros we're having here. Then it's just a pity for Mackenzie. For me, he was producing his best boxing. He was finding some space, getting the long punches off, and then maybe going into the clinch. Oh, lovely punch! Oh, lovely boxing at the start of this round again from the challenger. And the assumption is going to go 12. Don't forget we've got Dave Paris of London, Jose Rivera, Puerto Rico, Robert Watson from Michigan as the judges. Referee doesn't vote. And he's got Robinson two rounds up now, Jim uh, Barry's unofficial. I don't think we're seeing the, the same intensity from Robinson that we've seen in the past. Maybe, maybe it's still to come, we know he's a strong finisher. But I think now is the time to put the pedal down. I thought he had at one point, but he, he slackened up a bit. He didn't maintain it, that's right. And McKenzie, he's getting, a lot, through, a he's getting right through his car guard there, McKenzie, and he's, he's had to force him out there and shove into him there, Robinson. He was taking some good shots. So the hooks come up a cuts, Jim, weren't they? Yep, and, and he's putting a bit more authority into his punching now, McKenzie. In the first couple of rounds, he was pawing with a jab, trying to steal rounds, but now he's putting some snap into his punches. And his legs are still looking fairly strong. See, this is what you'd expect. A lot of movement around the ring, drawing punches from Robinson and then pinning him on counters. But the main oh. thing is he's got a lot more room in the last couple of rounds. He's room now to, to get his punches off. A minute to go in the ninth. Breaking ground a bit more, Robinson, Jim, than he has been, isn't he? Just stepped back a couple of times there. Yeah, well, as I say, it's not the intensity that we usually expect from Robinson. I mean, if he still has the strength left to, to produce that, then it's still to come, still a long way to go. But I feel he should be putting uh, McKenzie under more pressure than he has the last couple of rounds. Oh! Unbelievable there. That looked a clean punch to me. Had his back to me there. For me, it was a good body shot, Reg, what? yeah. And he's taken the win. Incredible turnaround. And he's counted him out in the ninth round, and they will go crazy with that one. Well, little Mackenzie there, he was, he was boxing quite well at that stage, and then bingo, one hit for a man who doesn't profess to be the hardest puncher of all, but he's accurate. And he just knocked all the steam out of Mackenzie. He has been knocked out before, but that was when he was really dragging to do the weight in the first round. Uh, but the way that fight was going, Jim, you could bet, well, the biggest odds of all that, that wouldn't end in a knockout at that stage, now, well, particularly the there, with a body punch. In a couple of earlier rounds, Robinson was looking for the body, and it seemed to be having an impact there. Uh, once or twice, McKenzie actually turned and looked at the referee up when body shots landed, as though they were troubling him. But there was never any sign that was going to happen. Here it comes in but replay. It was bang on the ribs, where he, there's no muscle around there, so... Nothing to, to firm up, nothing to take that the power of the shot. Ooh. Bang, in a way, but that was a beauty. Knocks the wind that out of you, that one, Jim, I assume, does it? Right onto the rib cage, as I say, which you can't tense up. The stomach, you can take punches all night long. But round at the side, the short rib there, bang, a lovely punch. 
There it, there is. it goes, and it just knocked the wind completely out of Duke McKenzie. Well, where does this fellow Robinson go from here now? He's, he's got to start, start taking on some other big boys now. The WBC champion Kevin Kelly, the BA champion Eloy Rojas of Venezuela, and the American Tom Johnson of the IBF, because he's ready for them. The strange red, as you say, there were no signs of a one-punch finish in this fight, and that's what we got, a one-punch finish. A tremendous fight Duke first of all I mean you really put a tremendous effort in there tonight and a really disappointing way for you to finish on a great punch to the uh, short it's, rib uh, it's not about effort it's about winning this yep. is the champion it's uh you know he's, he's there for all to be seen I, I got beat it's as simple as that but I did what I thought was the right plan trying to box when he wanted to fight and fight when he wanted to box but he, he had a little bit too much for me that's all it really boiled down to nice guy Steve Robinson well, you can't afford to be nice guys during the contest. No, that though, was a you? war. That was a good, world-class fight. And um, I'm glad I gave value for money and all the rest of it. But I would love to be talking to you as a champion, but I ain't. So it's time to say thanks. He's oh. very strong, isn't he? Steve well, Robinson. yeah, that's his strength. <laughs> I thought I had him beat. I thought that uh, if I could take him, especially to the later rounds, is where I normally get a second win, then I could just box, out, box him out of it. But he got a little bit stronger and, um, you know... Are you going to press on? For sure. You yeah. I've lost to the world's number one. Yeah. No shame in that. Steve, uh, he gave you a hard time tonight. Uh, you weren't looking quite as sharp as you sometimes do, but your strength was there. Oh, maybe because he's a good boxer. Like, enough respect to Duke McKenzie. He's a great boxer. He's been world champion three times, three different weights. So he was uh, a very hard fight. Uh, you, you could say he was more or less even the fight, you know? And uh, it wasn't much in it. So I got a left foot well, working. We actually had you just ahead, but let's show you the end because. Duke won't enjoy seeing this, but it was a terrific punch, Steve. Yeah, I kept myself tight. I knew I had to dip then. I, I dipped the left hook to the body. It was a well-timed left hook, it was. Yeah, right in, right in the midsection. I was right in the middle, yeah. God damn. Yeah. Is this like one punch? This takes one punch. It's like we let him to Lewis last week. Yeah. There's not much you can do about that, is it? Sweet FA. <laughs> Nothing. Just got caught. Right in the solar flexes, and uh, so you know, that's it. Hey, what Gary, nice yes, Steve. I'd like to dedicate this fight to my newborn son, who's a month old, yes, and um, Jacob, and my uh, son Luke, who's four years old. You do well with your schedule to get time to produce babies, actually. Hi, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, what happens to you now? Well, as I tally up to the promoter and the manager now, yeah. I have a bit of a rest now. Um, I get ready to move into my house in uh, November, just relax. I think we'll have a final word with Duke, because, Duke, you were going for a four-timer, and you've never really hit the big money. I mean, you promoted Frank Warren has paid you as much as he can, 40000 a big payday for you. Sick as a parrot. There's nothing else I can really say. I'm gutted. I'd love to be in Steve's position and be like the champion, and, you know, products. It ain't worth crying about it. Done. It's done. No. OK, gentlemen, Steve, mm. terrific punch. Duke, good effort. A great fight. Thank you. Right, Jim. Thank you very much indeed, Gary. Just to endorse that, it was a terrific fight. I hope it lived up to everything, at least at the start. But what a sudden ending. We'll be back from Cardiff in a couple of minutes' time. Uh, 
That's right. But did it surprise you that, that he went over from this particular no, shot? No, no, it didn't surprise me at all. He was completely relaxed here. And what, just watch the position. He pulls his elbow out a little bit and watch where this punch travels. It hits him right in the floating rib there. Took the wind out of the sails. There's no protection against the lungs there at all. And he went down and he wasn't going to be able to continue. Absolutely. He is going to take some beating, particularly here in Cardiff. By isn't God, he, he's going to take some beating over here. It's a fantastic crowd. And seething atmosphere. You can cut it with a knife. It's incredible. It reminds me of the King's Hall. <laughs> OK, thanks a lot indeed, Barry. Well, Richie Wenton uh, made a comeback here tonight. Richie Wenton, of course, his last fight was against Bradley Stone. And Stone, uh, as you might well know, died soon after that. A very hard night indeed for Richie Wenton. And Wenton in the black here, well, his mind was never really in it. Fighting a Welshman, Neil Swain. He really, his mind looked at elsewhere. And uh, towards the end of the round, the fifth round, well... Richie went and literally turned his back on the action and decided he had had enough. He's still the British super bantamweight champion, Richie Wenton. But now, of course, he has to decide whether he wants to continue in this game. Well, afterwards, Richie had a word with Gary Newbon. Is it impossible to get what happened out of your mind, do you think, now, Richie, having got back in the ring? Every second of every minute of every round, Bradley Stone was in my, my mind. And, you know... I'm not using Bradley Stone as an excuse, don't get me wrong. No. You know, it is, it's one of them things, you know what I mean? So. Do you really want to carry on? Do you think it's I've worth it? I've got to have a think about a situation. You know, actually, I'm at the bottom now. I'm really, really at the bottom now. And I've got to have a good, long think about it. I feel really sorry for Richie Wenton. He's got to make a decision, of course, about whether he wants to carry on as a pro fighter. Robbie Regan, though, he's heading for a European title shot. Regan had a very quick victory here tonight. Well, your next big fights are coming up here on ITV on Wednesday week, and we go up to Sheffield to see the Prince, Prince Nassim Hamed, in action against the fellow who uh, gave Stevie Robinson a bit of a crack here, Freddie Cruz. Hamed really will be do, out to do a quicker job on Freddie Cruz. There's International Rugby Union as well that night, Wales against Italy. ITV 10.40, and that is on Wednesday week. And that's it from Cardiff. Robbo rules, OK? Good night, you all.